so to kick things off today, um, starting with a suggestion from Philip and Anton, is that um, it's kind of difficult to communicate what Research Hub is all about in a succinct way. Like when our community members try and uh, refer like their friends to Research Hub. So one thing that um, like this idea has bounced around in my brain a little bit, and I think it it makes sense now to start to pursue it, but to create some kind of piece of media where it's really easy for people to just like share a link to either like a blog post or a video or something like that, where um, we can succinctly explain what Research Hub is all about and pitch why, you know, a friend would want to join in. So um, I guess like the two pieces of this, which I'm curious about are like, if we do create a piece of media, like what medium should it be? Like, should it be in writing? Should it be like a, a podcast, maybe like a short, like audio description? Should it be a video? If video, should it be like a live piece of content where like actual users are describing it? Or maybe like um, a while ago, I made a um, like cartoonish explainer video um, for another project that I was working on, which is like relatively easy to do. Um, so yeah, the medium and then the message. So depending on what we choose to do, like what content should actually like be in this piece of content that's designed to help like attract new people to Research Hub. So yeah, curious what you all think. I, I personally would prefer uh, two formats, one short kind of like a bl blurb of text that I can send to people who don't have time to watch the video, right? To just describe in what Research Hub is all about. And perhaps the second one is a video, not a long video, maybe two, three, four minutes. But that would cover it for for me and, you know, my needs and kind of kinds of people I interact with usually. Yeah, I personally, uh, so I like uh, what Anton said, like uh, some text. I think um, there's the, the other part, which is like whoever has more time can watch a video or like audio, whatever it may be. But I personally, for me, like what is most effective is having like a landing page that has a combination of text plus like uh, visual graphics. So kind of like our about page, I think it's pretty good, but I think like, you know, if we make it more concise and like uh, even like requiring less scrolling, I think it can be very effective. Um, so that's what usually works for me. I like it too, because um, it's SEO index indexable. So it will go into like Google. It's got some benefits. We can link to it very easily. So that's why I like that. But in addition, I do think if we have the bandwidth and something like uh, like a video or an audio would work as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, by the way, in addition to what Anton said, probably like in, for our own benefit, having like uh, one to two sentences of what research up is about would be good just for our own like I have to go and explain it. Sometimes I struggle a little bit. I'm like, oh, it's a platform for collaboration for science. And I have to really like figure it out. And I think for our own sake, it'll be good for if we can nail down like a couple of sentences there. Not to be greedy. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, I like starting with like a, I don't know, max like two to three sentence, like what, just like mission statement almost like what are we doing like what is research hub if we can like distill that in like two or three sentences i think it's we can build a lot of content from there and then also like just stepping back maybe it helps us think about hey what are the things we need to prioritize too so this is actually a really good topic um one thing we're going to talk about uh in our offsite later this week is research hub's mission um Accelerating the pace of scientific research is like, in my view, a little bit generic. And there are a couple of other projects that have sort of like similarly worded missions. And so um, we're gonna kind of talk about it and try and nail it down into something slightly more like unique of a value proposition. 
And so um, I have something in mind, but it would be interesting to hear from the community members here, like, what do you all think Research Hub's mission is? And I'll, I'll take that back and report back to the entire team uh, this Friday when we have our offsite with that, uh, you know, piece of information. Well, it's like it's all it's, sorry. Go ahead. You you can go. <laughs> it's a little awkward at this stage, right? Because I think the primary goal, of course, is a uh, economic system that you are trying to introduce that will benefit, you know, distributing the wealth towards people who traditionally wouldn't get it, like peer reviewers, and accelerating research in, in ways that you know people can crowdsource the uh, the research more easily. But all those are not currently implemented right and we are not even like it's supposed to talk about it <laughs> so it's kind of awkward to have a mission statement that you can't share with anyone so perhaps we could use the um, the temporary mission statement maybe based solely around the the interactions like, between users right so we are trying to facilitate the the meaningful discussions and you know commenting on the cutting edge research stuff like that peer feedback everything that we could master other than tokenomics so i, I agree i think that's very insightful um nick and steven do you guys have any thoughts i'll, I'll share what i think afterwards uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've I've always seen uh, Research Hub as a way to uh, expand open source research. Um, the incentive part is important because it would enable uh, this uh, site to be viable as, as a viable alternative to uh, posting on a journal. Um, but yeah, I, it's. For me, as a user, it's it's all about open research. I th I think I'd agree. Yeah. It's um, focusing on sort of the open research idea would probably um, be the best message. It's like doing for academia what GitHub has done for like open source software, and yeah, just like sort of in general disrupting academia and making it up to date with like modern internet, like um, sort of disrupting the whole the whole process from getting funding, um, uh, yeah, applying for grants, making that smoother, uh, peer review, making that more efficient and possibly more open um, or transparent, and then publishing, uh, making it so you don't have to sort of like pay to get published in like a, a big journal and to like create uh, yeah just a career progression outside of that where you can get prestige by like publishing outside of these big journals and yeah <laughs> yeah totally i mean i think it's actually really important to have the word open in the mission somewhere um Anton, to, to your point, uh, you're right. Like we can't totally be like uh, explicit about, I think the long-term utility that Research Hub will provide, but I think there's ways to communicate it that are okay. Um, like what uh, Nicholas said with incentives. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with um, Nami and Cooper Smout who um, has like a nonprofit trying to like help organize scientists to like basically issue paywall journals. And so one thing that he was saying, and this to me, I think is the real key is that like, science is all about reputation. Like reputation is kind of the incentive model that currently exists. I wanna publish in nature because nature has a great reputation as represented by impact factor. And when I publish in nature, that makes me more eligible for grants and like basically career stability in the future. And so to, to me, I think the thing that Research Hub can do that ResearchGate can't do is uh, tweak the incentives of science. And so try and like disempower 
like the bibliometric incentive structure that currently exists and replace it with something that's like evidence-based and designed in a way to encourage better behaviors. So rather than like a reputation system that has these perverse incentives that come out of it, like a, a new, like, you know, modern, so lame, but like a, a reputation system that encourages like open science and like healthy research behaviors. So to me, like tweaking the mission to say like, and, and this is like my own pet thought. So, you know, don't like, please feel free to tear it apart, but um, like accelerating the pace of scientific research by like improving the incentive structure of academic research or, or science in general, like throwing the incentive structure in there. Cause I think RSC is the key to do that. And then Anton, you're right. We haven't really, like all of our future development so far hasn't really been about the incentive structure. It's almost been like a little bit of an afterthought. So I think putting that in the mission and kind of like focusing our development efforts on kind of refining that value proposition um, would be key as we're getting a little bit of early evidence from your power user program. The, the, the reason, like it's it's not, the problem is not that I can't like talk about the incentive structure. I think just because there are so many missions, right, and and they are very different in terms of the timeline, right. So, and I think during this stage we need to figure out the set of missions that are like achievable within a year, right? Because not only it's it confuses people when you start talking about yeah. all those things, like like when you when you if you approach an academic and you'll be like. We are going to replace journals. You already lost a lot of reputation in their eyes because they probably already think you have no idea what they're talking about. You have never published in your life. This, right? So, like, unless you show them actual logistics of it, they wouldn't even consider it. And right now, there are no logistics, right? So, I think we should focus about like the the value proposition that is current, right? So you have the ELN, we have the hypothesis structure, we have we have Reddit for science, right? Reddit for science is already a good enough thing uh, if done well. I wonder if our like short-term mission should be something like, um, almost like we wanna, we wanna like have a place where, something about content creation, you know, like something to do with content, like, we want to be a platform that provides like the best original science content, you know, something like this. I wonder if we want to, we have a big mission of like, Hey, accelerate science, you know, but I want to, I wonder if we should pitch it more like this. So then people know like, Oh yeah, like I want to create some content about science here. You know, I wonder if we want to make that kind of claim and then like later we can change it. But like over the next like year, two years, whatever, like if we, go with that and then like because right now all of our feature development has been in that kind of area um and so like our features back up that kind of claim and maybe as a result yeah people can get uh like funded and like things like this but if people know us as the place for original science content or something like i don't know exactly what the wording is but something like that it could be uh something that black people latch onto. It's it's like it's I don't think you should pitch it as like original science content. It's like science commentary, right? So the the, the comments themselves they are not, you know, as as rigorous as like the peer reviewed published papers. I don't think they should be, right? I think you should be like in between the popular science and actual science type of layer, perhaps. And maybe you could you could you know double down this direction and try to reach the popular science producers, right? And try to pitch it to people in academia to submit their papers, not to do like any of the incentive stuff, but to get like, to get interested, but non-scientific opinions on your paper. Like you have, you have your papers, right? You live in your ivory tower, but what do actual people think about your research? Applaud and find out, you know, this kind of stuff. So I guess Anton, you're thinking content creation and feedback. Yeah, for sure. This is a place to discuss articles. Like, like you personally, why would you log in into Research Hub? Like, if you would, if you would need to 
learn something. I don't know. If you were a scientist, scientist, you would you would read the read the original paper yourself, right? If you have no idea how science works, you would watch a YouTube popular science video. If you're in between, then you would want to hear like what other people think about uh, the, the article and stuff like that. I mean, that is a very compelling value prop or like mission statement, which is like, you come here to discuss scientific, I don't know about if we could just say articles, but like things in science, you know, like anything in science. That I think is a pretty strong statement, but then like we need to get a lot of people talking and then, yeah. Yeah, but for I think, sure. But I think if you go tell your friends, hey, like, come to research hub to discuss science everybody knows what that is immediately you don't have to think about it right so mm -hmm. yeah i think uh, github statement is um yeah I, I totally agree with you guys and um, i'm going to say a couple of things that may not be so coherent but like usually like uh i find that businesses usually start from like a very specific mission statement and then they get really general because they're so big and they're like, oh, we do so much. Let's be like, come up with this like general statement. Um, I find that um, we're in a position where I, I totally agree that this is where we come to discuss um, research hub is where you discuss science in a structured way. Like we have hypotheses and in the future we'll have like uh, new things to facilitate a more productive discussion. Um, let me think about like GitHub statement and I hate going back to GitHub, but so many parallels. So GitHub is a, I think their statement is like where the, the world builds software. So research hub is kind of like uh, where the world does research, <laughs> research or something. Yeah. So um, take it like, you know, with a grain of salt, but maybe uh, it'll help like uh, figure out like an actual statement here. Like, I think the current product, like the come to research hub to discuss science, it's like, it's simple, but I think there are already like other places on the internet where people do that, like r slash science or something that has like millions of subscribers. And if you post something there, uh, you'll actually get like a ton of comments just because Reddit's user base is so big. So it's hard to kind of compete mm -hmm. with Jet. Like if it's just that, I think. Well, I would say, I would say like maybe, uh, like it, it's not necessary that we just have to pitch it that like, or like, it's just that, but like, if you tell, like, it, I don't know, like, it's almost like, um, well, one for one, there's a, I don't know, a couple million people talking on our science. It shows that, hey, people, there's an appetite for something like this, you know, that people do want to discuss something, right? And then like, if we make it as digestible as possible for people, I think it's better because then like, we basically tell people, hey, this is what we want you to do here. And then they, then they say, do I want to do it or not, you know? And then we, th we see like, okay, they don't want to do this specific action, but would they want to do X, Y, Z, you know? So it's like, it makes it easier versus like, I think if we have too broad of a thing and like too many things we throw at them, now they're like, oh, I don't know what to do here. And I think that might be what Anton is running into sometimes when he's trying to recruit people. Cause mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, like it's too broad. Like I, I don't know what to do here. So I think we do need to probably get narrow and like, very specific and then we can see like do people want to do this action right yeah i think i think you guys actually can compete with our science right be, be, just because i think the interface and your implementation is more conducive to be honest that's first and second i think your focus i think it, it, the chances of meeting an actual scientist on our science <laughs> is less than on, on research hub so the research hub can be kind of this bridge between like this is also the place where the offers themselves hang out and regular people so they can stumble into actual researchers and talk to them i think that's a very unique opportunity for many people so so i guess um 
trying to nail something down, coming back to GitHub's mission, where the world comes to discuss research. Is there more to it than that? Honestly, I think like I mean, we should probably, for the mission statement, um, our best shot, I think, at like carving out a spot in the market is with research coin and like providing incentives that don't exist currently uh, for research. Like we can incentivize like negative results and that kind of stuff. And stuff's important and no one, you can't really do that right now with the current system. So, yeah. But we don't have yeah. coins right now. <laughs> we need a temporary different narrative. Well, we do have coins. You just don't have a, a exchange rate. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe if we say something like a uh, research hub, like I don't know, research hub is a place where people um, get rewarded for discussing and uh, or yeah, just discussing mm -hmm. research. Or we can put some other verb there. Like we'd have to talk to the lawyers, but I even think you might be able to get away with like earn a living. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. really compelling. Like, if it's you're very specific, yeah. And now it's like, okay, I can get paid or I get rewarded by doing research, discussing research, yeah. like doing like, something. If you're like there. a like a poor grad student, and uh, you can just make money by like posting your your work online and like discussing it, like, that seems seems pretty useful. And like a lot of people would. Uh, I think sign up to do that. If it meant that they could it's, get paid. So the problem with uh, people in academia, they're kind of a little behind times uh, on crypto, especially, and they're very conservative on where they invest their time and effort. So actually, like I have failed to convince people to join, even though I'm like, okay, I, I stake my personal reputation. It's going to be worth it. Like I can't disclose any like specific details, but you're going to be satisfied with, you know, the, the output of your labor. Still no, like if, 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 if we are not allowed to, like if, it didn't, if they don't see how you can convert this uh, research coins into something else, and that's also going to be a problem after, even if it's like easily convertible, you will still have to teach people how to do it. Like at some point you will need like, a one click button at the top of the screen to let, invite people to join because otherwise they are like, no, what do I need to like make an account on Coinbase? What do I do with this? Where are my glasses? You know? No, it's a good point. I think this is, this is some pretty solid feedback and enough for us to, to bring to our offsite with like good insight from what the community thinks. Um, just in the interest of time, because we're at 25 minutes now, I think it makes sense to talk a little bit about the coupling of uh, research coin to reputation. Anton, do you mind kind of like giving quick background there? Uh, well, the, the main concern right now is the privacy one, right? So right now, if it's equal to reputation, if REC is equal to reputation, then if you look at someone else's profile and you see they have, you know, X reputation, you can reasonably assume they have X amount of REC, right? And some users reached out to me and they felt uncomfortable that other people basically know their financial situation on the website. Uh, before that, I personally am not a I understand the value proposition of the research coin. Like, yes, that's why you have it, right? You can like artificially inflate someone's uh, reputation and you need this function, right? To sell, to sell a research coin. But then at the same time, it's, it's kind of weird seeing a user come out of nowhere and they have like 2K reputation the next day. Feels unnatural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, what, what do you do? Like, uh, let's say you do want to trade your or I see for money because you know you're making a living, as we say. Then now you're not a reputable person. It's kind of like a weird thing. Yeah, that's another question that I actually don't have the answer to. What happens to your reputation after you withdraw a research coin? It stays the same, I think. It does. That's not obvious. Not obvious at all. Yeah. You're muted, Patrick. Okay, yeah, so the current way that it's 
reputation and RSC is working is like it's tied to rep your RSC is tied to reputation in the sense that every action that generates you RSC on the site gives you reputation. But like let's say you go buy coins on like uh Uniswap or something, or like you someone gives you a bunch of coins, that doesn't improve your reputation by that much. So yeah, like there's there's some there's a correlation between earning rep and earning coins, but like there it breaks when you like you receive coin like if someone goes sends you uh, RSC like you don't get that same amount in rep. So yeah, but you could you could send it to your friend and your friend just upvotes you with a billion. There you go, you're a top user on Research Hub. Well, I mean your friend will upvote you, but like I don't. I need to look at the system currently, but I don't think like if I send you RSC, you don't get that as rep, you know? Oh, no, I mean, like you post a, a comment and like, even if it's a good comment and your friend supports yeah, it with a billion know, RSC. I don't think you get that as rep currently. You, I think um, you do. I, la, yeah, last you time do. I checked, you did. And also right, if maybe you we change send the system it. at some point. Yeah. 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 So maybe like, we need to talk about I'll, that. Yeah. Yeah, I felt an issue where if you send the coins back and forth, you can both sort of like reuse the coins to increase rep. So yeah, we still need to fix that. Yeah. We got a piece of feedback uh, yesterday too, where um, like a potential new user uh, felt frustrated that they would never be able to catch up. So somebody who is a PhD student and would be a valuable user and probably deserves higher reputation than someone like me was discouraged from contributing um, because they didn't think they'd be able to catch up. And that's not an ideal situation. So even with like this balance between rep and RSC, like it's pretty complex. And, and even clearly like our team doesn't have like a full grasp on it. So yeah, I think I think it's asking a lot for new users who might be easily turned off to to try and understand the entire system. So I think I agree with Anton that like having the rep and like I think they can be like sort of associated but having them having saying like RSC is reputation I think is an issue that won't be able to actually last over the long term I yeah I definitely agree and I think yeah I think Thomas agrees too um right yeah. Uh, not sure if it's like well echoed, uh, but yeah, it definitely makes sense. What about it shouldn't be something that you can just buy, like buying reputation. Yeah, you can just. Yeah. It's like like you said, Joyce, they're related, but just by you know you 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 sponsoring someone because they did something good, therefore their reputation is improving, but not directly. Um, related to, yeah not like by the rsc amount just by some other amount maybe yes Makes one sense. of our i think the initial reason that it was tied together was like a legal one where um it it makes sense from a utility perspective if the coin is reputation then it's like oh okay this coin has utility it's tokenized reputation but i think we've built the product to the point now where we've got plenty of other use cases and so we don't necessarily need to be dependent on that the, the relationship between rep and RSC that I think makes the most sense is like a cap for your votes in the DAO, where if you have 2,000 rep, but a million RSC, you only get 2,000 DAO votes. So it's like an upper limit for your influence within the community um, when it comes to like the actual governance structure. So there is value to the rep, but it's only in preventing like people from coming in and buying the system, essentially. Yeah, and there are so many use cases for the reputation, right? So once we develop the separate hubs, we could have like hub specific reputation. There are so so much potential in it if it's decoupled from RSC and can't be influenced artificially. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll, I'll bring this up again in our end chat tomorrow because I think this is probably a we need to address it sooner rather than later before we get attention from a listing. Um, so I actually have another call that I have to hop on now. Um, but you guys can feel free to keep things going if you'd like to. Okay.
Uh, before you go, I guess like for the video idea, I don't know if you've seen the channel on YouTube called Finematics. It's like an explainer channel for different concepts in crypto, like DeFi, and they explain like what are flash loans or what what is a roll up. Uh, it's like that style of video where it's like the hand drawing out stuff to explain the concepts. I think that's a pretty popular channeling in like crypto. So yeah, cool. What's could it be a good idea. Finematics. It, Finematics, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, could get some ideas from that. Awesome. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, guys. See you. See you guys. Bye, Patrick. Can someone help me unban one of the power users? <laughs> yeah, Patrick, you're on mute, by the way. Oh, how, how did. Well, yeah, we need to look into how these guys are getting banned. Um, so wonder... what happened? What happened was it was duplicate comment. I think they sent it by accident, and I removed one of them, and then everything got removed from their account. And I think their account's kind of under review on their side. Oh, which user was it again? I think did Leo look into that or no? He hasn't unbanned them yet. Uh, I don't think he is. It's Kofi Kwaki. Kofi Clark. Yeah, this is the one you posted about, right? Mm -hmm. Leo said that he should be reinstated now. Oh, really? But yeah. Okay. That's what that's what he said on Slack. Let, let's look at his profile and check. Yeah, I think the reason that happened is because basically, whenever you perform a moderation action on an account, like you delete one of their posts, it like mm -hmm. flags them as, yeah. Their it's account might be back, but everything is gone from what they. Everything is still gone. How many comments do they have before? Just a few, just like three or two. It's, it shows that right now on their account. Three really? comments, one paper submission, yeah. I look at it and it's... Yeah. I see three comments, one paper submission. What do you What do you see, Anton? I see none. I see zero. Can you share your oh, screen? Wait. See all people. Okay, but maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. There are many people with the same name. <laughs> I can link it in. Um... Yeah, it's okay. So never mind. He says it's working. Yeah. So okay, false alarm. Right, Sorry cool. about that, guys. Yeah, I think I we should be good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Right. Have cool. a good trip, guys. Yes. See you. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Bye bye. See you, Anton. Bye bye. See you, Pat.